Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. While I've been doing a lot more electronics projects recently, one piece of test equipment that I have never owned or even used is an oscilloscope. I've looked at the things at Axeman Surplus and thrift stores and garage sales, and they look really interesting, but they also look expensive, big, bulky, and very confusing. There are a million knobs and dials on the front of these things. They take up a huge amount of space, and I live in a pretty small house with a pretty limited work area, so I'm a little bit leery of buying a gigantic piece of equipment that I don't know how to use. I'm also a cheapskate, and I like my equipment secondhand, dumpster dive from the surplus store, etc. So I don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on a device that, again, might get used once or twice as a novelty and then thrown into the back of a closet somewhere. So I've been kind of keeping my eye out for a cheap, small, and simple oscilloscope. And recently, I found one. So this is the Philco Junior Scope. And I picked this up at a recent ham radio swap meet. I was up at Midwinter Madness in Buffalo, Minnesota. Uh, a few of you said hello to me there, so that was kind of fun being recognized. Uh, I didn't realize I had quite as much of a following in the ham radio community because I rarely get on the air. I have a ham license, but I'm really bad at using it other than just playing around with weird equipment. So um, anyway, that was fun to talk to a few of you up there. Now this thing was on a table for $40 and uh, the folks selling it were able to turn it on, show me that it works, and show me some basic oscilloscope type stuff on the front. So I said, yeah, why not? For 40 bucks, this thing is, you know, it's tiny, it takes up no space, it only has a couple controls. This looks like an oscilloscope that I can wrap my head around and I can maybe learn what an oscilloscope is, what it does, how I can use it, how it's useful to me, before buying something a little more full-featured, larger, and uh, possibly more complex. So what is an oscilloscope? What do they do? How do you use one? How is it practical in everyday life? I've never had a formal electronics class. I'm not a great electrical engineer, I just kind of mash things together. So I did a little research. I did manage to find uh, an original advertisement for this that was part of the original manual. So I did read through the manual and I learned a couple things, although I'm still very confused. This thing came out in 1946. So all of the practical examples in here are how to tune up your tube radio, how to adjust your television, these newfangled televisions that had just come out. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff with equipment that nobody really uses anymore except obscure collectors. Not a lot of practical applications in the manual, but I went online and I read a few more things about oscilloscopes and what they're useful for today. Basically what this does is show a visual representation on the tiny little screen here of an electrical signal. So, uh, for example, a power line wall circuit is going to give you 60 hertz of oscillation. That's an AC voltage, so it's going to oscillate 60 times a second. You can see that on here. I believe it has the time on the x-axis and the voltage on the y-axis. So you can see the voltage go from high to low, and you can adjust things on here. You can adjust the timing signal to flatten that out and actually look at the sine wave curve, or whatever kind of curve it is, because there are different kinds of signals. Back in 1946 when this thing was built, I don't know if they had invented digital yet, uh, but a digital signal might be a square wave, a high and then a low, while an analog signal curves between the high and the low. And that's about the limit of my understanding so far. As I said, it is a very, very simple, very small unit. Um, this has very limited functions. It was mainly designed, as far as I can tell, for casual users, radio amateurs, radio repair people. You could bring it with you out in the field, you could um, diagnose your own equipment or customer's equipment. Doesn't have something called a trigger, which I guess modern oscilloscopes do. Instead it has a uh, sweep frequency adjust. That's all Greek to me at this point. It's so simple that apparently some of the vertical uh, adjustments are done with just a magnet. So you open up the case and you move a magnet to adjust how the electron beam hits the screen. Anyway, that's enough of me talking. Let's turn this thing on and see what it does. I didn't have the correct probe leads for this, so I hacked some together out of random electrical junk that I had out in the garage. I don't think the orange tape is quite up to uh, normal electrical standards, but hey, at least it matches my OSHA-approved t-shirt. You can buy these on my web store. I'll put a link down in the description below. And uh, I would recommend wearing these shirts much more than actually doing anything I'm doing in here. Um, don't try this at home. Okay, let's turn this thing on. It is just a 
two-prong power outlet because they had not invented ground yet in the 1940s. So we've got just very simple controls. We have frequency, function, and this chooses where your uh, synchronization comes from for the screen. Uh, you've got external line, which takes the 60 hertz signal off the power line. You've got internal, which I think takes it from somewhere inside. Horizontal, which takes it from back here. I don't actually remember the difference between horizontal and external at the moment. I'm going to have to reread that manual again. Uh, we've got the range in cycles. We have a gain sync, well, gain for V-direct and gain sync for H-direct, horizontal and vertical. This little knob here is both the power and brightness or intensity. I'm going to turn that on and just let the tubes warm up. There are vacuum tubes in here and they take some time to come up to temperature. You can actually see them glowing if you look in the side. Now, if you look in there, you can see one of those tubes starting to light up. Uh, the other dial here is focus, so we might get around to using some or all these controls. I don't know yet. Now, reading through the manual, one of the first experimental things that it talks about doing is just checking the uh, waveform of your power supply. So we want to hook up the vertical input terminals. We want to set gain sync about one-third on. We want function to line. Uh, range control between 10 and 60, since it is a 60 cycle signal. And then we want to hook this up to an AC line. We're just going to plug it into the same electrical socket here and adjust uh, gain until we see a pattern and then intensity to get the right brightness. All right, we are seeing something on the screen here. Um, yeah, we've got a little sine wave going on. So that, I think, is the 60 hertz sine wave of our line voltage, our AC voltage coming from the wall. Now, it's it's skewed a little bit. It seems like it's kind of rotated to the right, and it, it's got this return line. Uh, this thing doesn't have, I guess, what's called a return cutout, so it actually shows you the electron beam coming back to start. Um, I think this is, might be where the magnet comes in. If we want to get this image aligned better, we would open this up, take a magnet, and drag it around uh, the vacuum tube, the cathode ray tube, to get everything lined up better. But uh, that might be advanced settings on this thing. Now, I can play with some other settings here. I can run the function over to internal, and we get that, whatever that means. It looks fun. If I play with the frequency on that, we can get it to stabilize a little bit. Um, okay, if we go back to line, adjust that. Oops. And we can definitely make some interesting patterns here. Again, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just randomly adjusting stuff. Hopefully I don't break this. This thing definitely smells old. It has that slightly burning electronic smell that old radios and stuff do. I don't know if that's dust burning off in here or the thing using up its lifespan or something off-gassing and giving me cancer, who knows. So this thing looks really cool, but I've come right back to the question of what's it good for? What do I do with it? Now, my AC power coming out of the wall seems pretty clean, and I trust the power company to keep it looking that way. But what about some of my portable power supplies? One thing that the manual talks about is you could check how clean or how uh, pure the sine wave is on your AC power. These things have inverters built in. They're going from uh, direct current batteries to AC, alternating current, and they have to use tricky electronics to do that. They're not actually spinning a generator. This signal is probably coming from a spinning generator somewhere, either a steam turbine at a nuclear power plant, a water turbine at the local dam. With these things, there's nothing spinning. It's all integrated electronics, and you might not get a nice curving sine wave quite like that. So let's hook some of these battery banks up and see what do their waveforms look like on AC. Start with this little all powers unit. This is one I really like. I actually bring this along uh, when I'm camping or when I'm traveling. The only thing I don't like is the power button gets bumped really easily and it, it always turns itself on in a bag or a box. So we'll plug this in. And we get some Weird choppy nonsense. That is our AC waveform coming from the all powers unit. So it is basically jumping rapidly between the positive and negative side of the AC. But I think we're seeing that this is not a sine wave inverter. 
Now, most devices will work just fine on the little power bank here, even with this weird choppy AC signal. I've had absolutely no issues charging phones, charging laptops, running radios, running other equipment off of this. If you happen to have some slightly older computer, slightly more sensitive computer, um, something that really wants a pure sine wave, then these little guys aren't super appropriate for that. Let's try a different power bank. We've got this OPS unit. I, I still don't know how to pronounce that. Okay, well that is giving us a sine wave. So this OPS power bank seems to have a nicer inverter in it than the little all powers. And yeah, I can't get this to stop moving. It's slowly creeping across the screen no matter what I adjust. So I believe that's because the frequency on here is just slightly off of actual wall current. So the wall current coming from the power plant is probably 60 hertz. This might be 59.9 hertz or something else. And if I adjusted this some more, maybe I could get that to slow down. Or if I powered the oscilloscope off of the battery bank, and measured the battery bank at the same time, then I could select the synchronization from the line and we could get this to slow down. I'm not going to do that because I, I don't want to power cycle this over and over all day. I don't know how much life is left in all those tubes. I don't know how many duty cycles this has. So um, yeah, I'm not going to plug it into every single power bank just for demonstration purposes, but I think it's pretty cool that we can actually evaluate this power bank and see what does the power output look like. And it looks pretty good to me. If anything, I think these curves might be a little bit smoother than the curves from the wall voltage. So there's probably a little bit of noise in the voltage coming from the wall. There's random RF interference, there's power line communication devices, there's all kinds of other gadgets hooked up in the house that are causing kind of a choppy signal. With this battery bank, it's just the battery bank on the circuit and the AC current is pretty stable, it's pretty smooth, and it puts out a really nice sine wave. Okay, so let's see what all my other power banks look like. And yes, I do have too many of these. Um, I reviewed a ton of these things last year, and I, they're very useful for camping, for use out at Sandland, for uh, road trips. This one is a Bluetti unit. All right, that one also has a very nice looking sine wave AC signal. It's not quite as clean as the OPS unit, it's got a little wiggle here uh, halfway down the curve of the sine wave, so I'm not sure what that's about. We have a bigger all powers unit. This is the R600. That is very similar sine wave to the Bluetti. Uh, nice curve, but a little hiccup in the middle. And then last up, we have the really big all powers. This is the 1000 watt hour unit. And this one actually has a much more stable sine wave. This is much, much closer to wall current. It's hardly moving at all. I might even be able to get it to stabilize here if I adjust the frequency. Okay, I was actually able to get this one to stabilize and show essentially a static sine wave here. I think it's still creeping a little bit as the temperature changes, as things warm up inside the tube, so um, I can't get it to hold still completely, but this big all powers unit, the 1000 watt hour unit, seems to be right on the money when it comes to matching the frequency that the power company is putting out. So that was interesting, but does it really justify owning an oscilloscope? What else can this do? Let's try something with audio. Now, I'm not gonna actually fire up any radio transmitters today, but we're just gonna listen to some FM radio and try piping the audio output into this thing and see what that looks like. I'm basically just gonna hook up the speaker outputs from this to the oscilloscope. So yeah, I'm basically looking at an audio waveform. That's that's pretty cool. Undergraduate students were they primarily? Yes, exactly. At different college campuses. All right, I unhooked the probes and they're just hanging out in free air here. And I guess they're acting as an antenna. So we're getting just random interference from the uh, environment in the room. So I did find this oscilloscope music thing, which is supposed to make vector graphics based on sound effects piped through both the horizontal and vertical. Unfortunately, I think the oscilloscope uh, that you need to do this has some kind of an XY, uh, some other fancier setting, which this one does not have. So the best graphics I can get out of it are this little blobby thing in the middle. All right, so the little oscilloscope here definitely works and I can think of exactly two uses for it so far. Now I'm sure there are plenty of other applications for an oscilloscope. If anyone out there has any ideas for other practical uses I can do with this, preferably simple practical uses because this is literally the first time I've ever used one and I still don't know what I'm doing with it. And then um, if I were to get another oscilloscope, a modern oscilloscope, or knowing me, something from the 80s or 90s, what do I look for? Uh, again, what do I do with it? Uh, what features does it need? 
how do I use it on a daily basis, and how does it become something that's useful to me, useful to this channel, and not just another big clunky electronics device that takes up space in a closet somewhere. Thanks to everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time.